The 1993 movie Judgment Night certainly wasn't a hit, but its soundtrack was, overshadowing the movie instantly. Pairing hip-hop artists with alternative rock musicians to accompany an inner-city crime drama, the soundtrack both predicted the rap rock to come while sounding nothing like it. What it did sound like was 1993, a moment when the record industry was simultaneously hunting for the next Nirvana, and thanks to the new sound scan system, recognizing the true sales power of hip-hop and country. Conceived by House of Pain and Cypress Hill's manager, Happy Walters, it became a perfect artifact of its era, a soundtrack that achieved the rare feat of outliving its movie. Cypress Hill appeared twice, with Pearl Jam on Real Thing, and most notably with Sonic Youth on a woozy collaboration called I Love You, Mary Jane. Got a friend named Mary Jane, and she make me feel strange. Now I got to call out her name. I love you, Mary Jane. Hyping the album to Billboard before its release, Walters claimed, Alternative kids will love Judgment Night, while admitting the disc wasn't exactly targeting hip-hop listeners. Despite Sonic Youth's spooky feedback providing an ideal counterpoint to Cypress Hill's beats from the bong, however, many of the featured bands were probably more metal than alt. But connecting metal fans to hip-hop might have even been a bolder meeting of audiences. Judgment Night helped usher in rap metal, best epitomized by Just Another Victim, a collaboration between Helmet and House of Pain. It was an idea whose time had perhaps come. The year before had seen debut albums from Rage Against the Machine, as well as Body Count, Ice-T's instantly notorious thrash band. While the former hardcore kids in the Beastie Boys once again picked up their instruments for Check Your Head. But with its grinding metallic guitars and guttural confrontational growls, just another victim teams with testosterone, a sound that would overtake grunge's sensitivity toward the end of the 90s. It's easy to hear how Helmet and House of Pain's pairing helped create a blueprint for new metal, but retains the freshness of being the first to find the formula. I built the house, I felt the pain. You victimized, but got no one to blame. Just another victim. You're just another victim, kid. Another explosion comes with Slayer and Ice T's disorder. As with many of the tracks, the two artists have roots in the same city. In this case, less than 10 miles apart in southern LA. Coming just over a year after Body Count's infamously redacted Cop Killer, Disorder was a medley of smaller pieces produced by Rick Rubin, with Ice-T and Slayer bassist vocalist Tom Araya sharing the vocal booth. It was an unceasing rage index, from war to police to L.A. itself. Perhaps the truest feeling collaboration of rockers and rappers was Freak Mama, a ludicrous rave-up between two of Seattle's finest, Mudhoney and Sir Mixalot. Performing live over the band, Sir Mixalot frantically follows Mudhoney's garage fuzz, creating a ruckus that's looser and funnier than anything else on Judgment Night. Maybe that's why Sir Mixalot cracks at the end, I just lost my street credibility, y'all. But it remains at the heart of Judgment Night's weird experiments. Ain't no sense in front, no drag or drama. Come on, baby, give me that freak mama. Freak mama. Fallen, meanwhile, pairs De La Soul and Teenage Fan Club, two artists with little interest in either street cred or conflict. Floating on three chords in a loop, Fallen sounds equal parts Daisy Age hip-hop and Paisley-shirted power pop, another unique specimen. Thing goes busted while the guitar sways. B-side copy for the radio plays for something. I knew I blew the whole fan dangle when the drum program a water can go. If the Fat Boys single with the Beach Boys was a novelty, and Aerosmith's pairing with Run DMC started to open ears, Judgment Night was more like industry-sponsored R&D. Where else can you hear Del the Funky Homo Sapien chase down Dinosaur Jr.'s crooked, languid riffs? Well, it didn't crack the top 10. Judgment Night did hit the top 20, selling a half million copies within its first three months of release. More curiosity than Cornerstone, Judgment Night was the product of a young hustler who was onto something. The next year, producer Happy Walters would help launch the career of new metal pioneers Korn, releasing their self-titled debut. It would all calcify into a rigid form soon enough, 
But Judgment Night offers a glimpse of a simultaneously weird and mainstream rap rock future that might have been.